Hey guys, it is Megan Elizabeth from ByMeganElizabeth.com, founder and the creator of the She Makes Club. And today I want to show you how easy it is to create labels for your Distress Oxide ink pads. I'm actually creating two because I like to create one that is red upside down because uh, I like to store them upside down to keep them nice and extra juicy. Um, but I also like to have it on the reverse side, right side up for when it's like laying here and working. I just, it's, it's a neurotic thing, I guess. Uh, but it's really easy to do. So I wanted to show you how to do it. So what I'm going to do is come over to Ranger and I'll include a link in the description of the YouTube video and inside the She Makes Club as well as the blog post. So it's everywhere you can find it or just search Ranger Ink Distress Oxide label sheet. Uh, they already made it really easy for me, but I like to make it even easier for myself and print and cut it with Cricut Design Space. So you start out by downloading the PDF. Uh, it's pretty darn cool. There it is. You just want to make sure you save it to the desktop. Once you save it, I then I'll show you how I do it in my Mac. I come up to file and I export it as a PDF or a JPEG from the PDF to a JPEG. Um, it's already a PDF. You want to make sure that it's something that uh, Cricut Design Space can read. So we'll do it as that and we'll just replace it. So this is an updated list as of November 2020, which is great. That way I just have them all and then I know what I have. And it's really simple. So what we're going to do is come into Cricut Design Space, start a new project and upload that image. And I'll just show you start to finish. We want to grab the JPEG. Now, I like to do the moderately complex because there's going to be little spaces because this is such a tight knit little uh, grouping. You'll see why in a second. So I'm going to click moderately complex and then continue. Now, when I click on the white to remove the background, it gets pretty much all of it. But if I go and click preview, you're going to see that there's a bunch of spots where it does not separate. So this is something that you need to uh, be aware of. And you can kind of see if you zoom in where there's not gaps. If you don't see this little checkered pattern behind, you need to click and remove to get that gap. All right. So I'm just going to go through and make sure that there is a gap. And it seems to be that it's really only between like that yellow and greens that it really does it like see right here between those two greens. It really doesn't leave that checkered uh, line to cut through. So you just kind of want to go through and clean it up. And if you just zoom in and click around, it's really, really, really simple. Um, and that way it'll cut out each individual label for you. Okay. Even if the lines are touching or really close, that's fine. As long as you can see a black box around each one, it'll cut it out just fine. Okay. So continue. We're going to save it as a print and cut. Save. Oh, wait, one more thing. I forgot. Go back. Uh, no, never mind. Okay. Save. Insert. And there it is. Now, you can either leave that at the top or you can remove it and... Uh, Give yourself more space for printing because you don't really need that on there. So for me, what I did, you can just erase it. But the thing is, is that it doesn't quite give you the space back. So what I do or did is I took a square and I went across the entire top length and made sure that that was covered. And I kind of went all the way up against the label. OK, do you see how I did that? Then I selected both and I sliced it. Now I delete all of these pieces here and it gives me less of a uh, border. It's more like direct. So that's just how I did it before. Now for sizing, I am not worried about whether or not it's a little bit stretched or morphed. So what I do is I unlock perspective. So now I just want to resize it to 
what I want it to be. So it needs to be under like nine something. So I just need to make sure I shrink it down and I kind of stretch it out a little bit because that way I'm sure it can kind of get on where I need it to be. I'm pretty sure it needs to be nine and nine and a half, nine and a quarter. Yeah, nine and a quarter by 6.75. See, it tells you right here when you click on this. So we'll just go right to 9.25. And that should be pretty good. So now what we can do is click on make it. It's already set to cut and print. So if we just click make it, it's going to align it onto our paper. So what I need to do is first print it. So I'm gonna send it to my printer by clicking continue. That's what it'll look like. I need to send to printer and I always personally leave the bleed on I'm gonna send it to my Epson, and I always end up using System Dialog. I find that it works a lot easier, but you have to remember to go behind the application because that's where it kind of sends it to. So click Print. It'll just give you this for a while. If you forget, you have to go behind it and make sure it pulls up the System Dialog, and then just press just press Print. So now that that's all done, all printed out, I am going to just place this, this direction, the same way that it came out of design space on my mat, okay? Because if I tried to place it the other way, it wouldn't cut it out right. It would be all messed up and wonky. So, right. This is just label paper. I'm gonna load it in. And it's all in there correctly. And then I'll just press cut. While that's cutting out, I will mention, if you visit meganelizabeth.closetomyheart.com, um, we have an awesome deal till the end of the year on becoming a VIP. And when you become a VIP, it's $35 for the entire year, but you get $25 in Close to My Heart VIP credit before December 31st, which means you have $25. It's basically $10 for the year. You have $25 to spend in the shop. And OPS, by the way, when you go to shop within Close to My Heart, not only are there beautiful Close to My Heart inks and all kinds of awesome, amazing things already here, uh, the Cricut collections, organization, you name it. Let's just take a quick look and see if we click on inks. Oh yes, Distress Oxide ink pads are here. So you can earn 15% back on your purchases. Um, and that's why I kind of wanted to share this as well because I have a huge collection growing. I love Distress Oxide inks. I've been using them for quite some time. Uh, the difference between Distress Oxide and the traditional Distress inks is that the Distress Oxides are more of a hybrid ink with pigment and dye, which means they're a little bit more opaque. They sort of float on top of your paper. They don't quite soak in as much. So it allows for extra blendability. They still react with water, just like your traditional Distress ink. But Distress ink is more dot, well it is, dye based. So it'll bleed, it'll blend more in, uh, depending on what you use it with, you're going to get more of an intense look in color versus the more opaque look with the distress oxide. Um, so it's really cool. It works really well in combination with the dye ink from close to my heart. So it's a fun addition. I just wanted to mention it, check it out. Uh, all right. So we now have all of our labels done and ready to go onto our ink pads. So once again, I have them already on there upside down to be able to store them upside down and see what I have. But it drives me nuts when I'm looking at it and it, it's just, I, I'm doing the reverse side and I'm doing it right side up. Again, call me crazy. I don't care. Um, so I just want to, I'm going to show you the difference really soon. I actually have Distress Oxide Chip Sapphire and um, Spice Marmalade and a couple other colors on the way because they are available inside of my Close to My Heart 
shop. Uh, they're also available through a lot of other places. Um, the situation between the Distress Oxide and the Distress Ink is that the Distress Oxide is a more hybrid type ink. And I'm going to do more of a side-by-side -side comparison in upcoming videos here at the YouTube channel and inside She Makes Club. So I would love to invite you to come check those out. But the Distress Oxide is a hybrid of dye and pigment ink versus the Distress Ink, like the original, is more of, well, it is a dye ink, okay? So the reason the dye ink um, difference here dye kind of absorbs into your paper a little bit faster. There's still a lot of blendability with it. And of course, Ranger does an awesome job to have it react with water. Um, it can be a little bit more of an intense color. Whereas the Distress Oxide is a hybrid of pigment and dye. It's a little bit more opaque. It's thicker and creamier and sort of floats on top of the paper a little bit more to give you more blendability. And because it's more opaque, sometimes it's not quite as intense still reacts with water. And again, I'll do a side by side comparison for you really soon. But for today, let's just go ahead and label all of all of my inks right side up. And you can see it just they peel off awesome. The sizing ends up fitting just perfectly. I don't measure I like, I mean, I'm taking the time to do this, but I don't got too much time on my hands to just kind of, you know, do this however, <laughs> but I'm just grabbing each one and I'm doing it on the opposite side of the one that's upside down. Again, this is just because I'm a crazy person. So whatever works best for you, you might want it right side up when the lid's up and maybe you don't store them upside down. I like to store them upside down. They have stayed good and uh wet juicy for me for years this way some of these distress ox the, the distress ink pads that I have I've never re-inked and I've had them for more than 10 years 10 years um so that's really good to me and I feel like it just speaks to the quality of ranger as well as you know taking care of your your craft products projects this one's brand new I love it rustic wilderness it's beautiful. Um, it's just such a beautiful green, but you can even kind of see, like, if you look at the color here, let me grab pine needles. Cause I feel like pine needles is a close color comparison. It's still on the felt, which is great. Um, it, I mean, rustic wilderness isn't quite as dark, but you can tell that there's more of that op opacity to it versus the dye. And I have glitter on this one, but Hey, you know, whatever. Um, it's still good. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. And again, side-by-side -side video coming soon. All right, let's just finish labeling these up. I also need to get a purple. I cannot believe I don't have a purple. So I'm thinking I'm going to get seedless preserves, but I also want dusty concord. And of course I want shaded lime black. Uh, and I totally, totally need faded jeans. I'm just saying. Squeeze lemonade. Oh, so good. I have peeled paint coming. I have chip sapphire coming. I have uh, mermaid lagoon coming. I'm pretty sure I do have squeeze lemonade coming. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Anyway, have a great day, guys. Enjoy the moments. I'll see you again soon at buymegnelizabeth.com. And of course, I would love to invite you inside she makes club where we do really fun uh live monthly creative workshops and hangouts custom svg files uh we talk more about just life and encouragement and inspiration and everyday crafting and the cricket so i'd love to have you over there enjoy the moments bye, -bye.